Welcome to this video on designing a simple network in NetSim. We'll walk through five simple steps to simulate it. Creating the network scenario, configuring devices and links, modeling application traffic, enabling plot and trace options, running and analyzing the simulation. Step one, launching NetSim and creating a scenario. We are currently on the NetSim home screen. Here, you'll find various technology libraries. In this video, we click on Internetworks, but you could click on any of the options depending on the technology you wish to simulate. This opens the main NetSim GUI. At the top, under the Create Scenario tab, you'll see the device palette in the top ribbon, where you can access a variety of devices such as wired nodes, wireless nodes, L2 and L3 switches, access points, routers. To the right, You'll also find tools for establishing connections, such as wired links and wireless links. Step two, adding devices and links. To begin building the scenario, click and drag devices from the top ribbon onto the grid. Place two nodes, one layer two switch, one router, one access point, and two wireless nodes. After placing a device, you'll notice that the mouse pointer changes to the icon of the last selected device. You can now drop a few more devices if needed. To stop placing devices, simply right-click on any empty area of the grid or press the escape key. If you want to remove any extra device, just right-click on it and choose the remove option. Next, connect the devices using the wired link tool. Connect node one to the switch and node two to the switch. Then connect the switch to the router and the router to the access point. For wireless connections, Auto-connect is enabled by default. This means the wireless nodes will automatically connect to the nearest access point without requiring manual linking. If needed, this option can be disabled to allow manual control over wireless connections. Wired links appear as solid lines, while wireless links are shown as dotted lines. This network topology includes all three types of network setups. The two wired nodes connected via the switch form a local area network. The access point along with the two wireless nodes forms a wireless local area network. The router connects both LANs, forming a wide area network that links the wired and wireless segments together. Once the devices are placed, you can configure them using the right-hand side configuration panel, which we'll explore shortly. Step three, modeling application traffic. Now head over to the set traffic tab. Here, you'll see two sections, unicast applications and broadcast applications. Here, you can define traffic flows using built-in application types like CBR, FTP, HTTP, email, custom. Create a CBR traffic flow from node one to wireless node six. Optionally, add a second flow from wireless node seven to node two. Step four, configuring parameters, reports, Views and the right hand side panel. Go to the Configure Reports tab to enable key analysis options. Packet Trace logs packet level events, transmission, reception, drops. Event Trace captures internal simulation events step by step. Plots generates graphs for metrics like throughput, delay, and jitter. RF Heat Map visualizes signal strength in wireless setups. Show Hide Info tab. Use this tab to toggle what's shown on the design grid, including IP address, device name, and placement distance, device ID. You can also switch between default and compact icon styles. Right-hand side panel. Once your scenario is ready, use the RHS panel to fine-tune settings. The panel updates based on what's selected. Grid tab. Customize the layout by setting grid size, origin, background, and visual styles. Device tab. Layerwise configuration, general, transport, network, etc. Link tab, set data rates, BER, delay. Application tab, edit traffic details like source destination, protocol, and packet size. Plots slash logs tab, select performance plots to generate after simulation. Errors tab, check for missing connections or misconfigurations. In device or link tab at the top of this panel, you'll also find quick tools like Expand all sections. View errors. View modified fields. Property descriptions. Float or undock properties pane. Export or import configuration using Excel. 
Close the RHS panel. Step 5. Running the simulation. At the top ribbon, under the Create Scenario tab, click on the Run Simulation button. Before running, make sure to set the simulation time, for example, 10 seconds, in the simulation settings. Note. Simulation time is virtual and event-based. It doesn't correspond to real-world clock time. Once you click Run, NetSim will compile the scenario and execute the simulation. After the simulation completes, the results dashboard will appear with a full summary of network performance. On the left, you'll find key sections. Application metrics shows details like generation rate, throughput, delay, jitter, and packets generated slash received for each configured flow. Link metrics gives you per link stats including packet counts, errors, collisions. Under plots, you'll find performance graphs based on what you enabled earlier. The logs section includes CSV-based logs. Again, the content here depends on the metrics you chose to log before the run. In traces, you'll see packet trace and event trace. Packet capture will display PCAP files if Wireshark was enabled. Other tabs like saved plots, additional metrics, and custom plots let you store and explore specific performance data as needed. At the top, don't miss the export results option. This lets you instantly save all simulation results into Excel format for easy reporting or comparison. Now, if you'd like to revisit your design, click the View Network button. This takes you back to your scenario layout. And that concludes our video on designing a simple scenario in NetSim. Thanks for watching.